Hey everybody, it's Teardown time again. Um, we've got here uh, something that people in the UK might recognise, uh, and it's uh, postal scales from a post office. Um, I picked these up off eBay. Um, it's not working. I've not even plugged it in. Um, that's mainly because the this plug's obviously completely shot, but. Um, I've not even bothered plugging it in. I thought I'd just take it apart, open it up, see what's inside, uh, see if it might be fixable. Um, so if it is, this might turn into a repair video. And uh, see see what's interesting about these on the inside. I mean, they are just a set of scales at the end of the day, but um, they're going to be built to last. Um, and they're going to be built to take a bit of abuse as well, with uh, all those uh, people queuing in the post office leaning on them, putting big heavy weights on them and all that sort of stuff. So let's uh, try and take these apart and uh, see what's on the inside. Right, so there's not really much to see really. The, they are pretty heavy. They must be about six kilos, seven kilos, something like that. Um, the whole chassis is um, cast aluminium. Um, the, uh, the top bed here, that's a piece of extruded aluminium. Here, this doesn't actually lift off. It's locked in. It's locked in place, but it is free to move around. Um, there's nothing, nothing on the back. Underneath, uh, we have uh, the base of the unit. Plus, we also have uh, this mounting bracket. Um, this is secured in place by um, a small Allen screw here. Um, so if I'll just quickly take that off. Okay, so this would be uh, screwed to the uh, whatever worktop it's going to be mounted to, and then this is slid on top and then locked into place. And on the rest of the base here, we have uh, the power cable coming in. Uh, we've got uh, mains fuse. Nothing up here. There's obviously some bits mounted on the underneath of this, and just in here we have uh, three ports. We've got port one, port two, and then another unknown port. On the quick bit of googling that I've done about this particular model, uh, you can actually get um, external displays that stand up on a little a little post. So that's probably data port for one of those. Um, and of course, uh, if it was used in the um, the post office, then there'd be a data link from the scales back inside. Um, behind the counter to uh, to go into their computer system for uh, producing the actual uh, postage. Okay, obviously on the front we've got a massive big uh, LCD. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head if they're dot matrix or whether it's just big numbers. Um, um, level meter, level gauge there, just so you can mount it, get it mounted level. Um, we've got ID label here, Burkell D104, maximum 3-6, um, so uh, you've got uh, the accuracy there. So uh, up to 3 kilos it goes to 1 gram, and then over 3 kilos to 6 kilos it's only 2 gram resolution, which isn't particularly good really. Um, and it's uh, 220, 240 volts only. Right, now to get in this thing, um, it's got some really nasty uh, security bits on here. Hopefully you can see that there. Now I've managed to uh, undo these before um, using a pair of pliers, but because the, uh, the hole is so small, I'm not going to be able to get anything down inside there to undo that. So given I can't unscrew these, um, there's only one thing for it. Okay, I think we're in. So we just got the cast top um, with the uh, the bed on it. Some little rubber dampeners. Looks like we should be able to remove this. Uh, so we've got. Uh, 
We've got one board here which has this shielded shielded can. We've got the uh, the strain gauge. It looks pretty substantial. We've got possibly a date code here. 2010-01, so from 2001. We shall see. Yeah, if I just undo these four bolts here, I should be able to take the top off. Right, well, having a quick look around this, what we've got is transformer here. Um, the wires coming out of that come up to this connector here. So I guess uh, this is sort of power supply. We're pretty obvious given there's a big filter cap there. Um, we've also got uh, three voltage regulators here. Uh, one of those is a 7805 uh, and the other is a 7905. So we've got plus minus five volts. Uh, we've got three fuses. Um, another filter cap. Load of unused connectors at the back here. We've got a big um, heat sink on uh, another 7805 just there and we've got this uh, shielded can here which has these screw terminals which connect through to the strain gauge. On the side here we've got another little daughter board um, with the, uh, the connectors I go through to the the bottom port. So there's not a huge amount on there. Pretty much it. Not much there. Um, those connect through onto uh, this board down here. Um, again, we've got a number of uh, unused connectors. So this is obviously used for other things other than just this. Um, I would say this is probably like the uh, the actual processing bit. Um, we've got an EPROM down there. We'll pop that out and have a read of that. And then this board here looks to be the display controller. Um, it connects straight onto the the LCD module here, which, by at first glance, it just looks like a standard Hitachi controller. LCD. Now I've just noticed there, um, this inductor is not attached. One of the legs has broken off. That might be why it's not working. Um, looks like there's another EPROM on, on this board. So I'll pop that one out as well. The uh, EPROM here has a date code of 99.48, so around about 2000 this was probably made, which ties into the possible date code on the back of the strain gauge as well, so that's, uh, so yeah, it's probably about 15 years old. You can see on the, uh, the strain gauge here, we've got a lo whole load of uh, handwritten measurements. I'm guessing this was sort of hand calibrated and tweaked. Right, what I'm going to do now is uh, just take off the the LCD screen module, which um, I point out also seems to have a backlight in it. Um, not sure if it's LED or electroluminescent. So uh, this is the screen, um, as I said it just looks like a box standard uh, LCD module, um, the date on this is 2001, so yeah, confirms the date, doesn't say who makes it. Typically the one that's broken off is the uh, the one that goes underneath everything else, so 
and it should be just about long enough to solder on, I think. Well, that's the uh, inductor soldered back in. Right, well, I can't get this to do anything other than uh, beep annoyingly at me, so uh, I'm not going to bother doing anything more with this. Um, it is only a set of scales after all. Um, so I'm just going to strip it strip it down. I'll probably salvage a few bits out of it while I'm going through just having a look at the last few bits. Um, obviously, I'll probably save the uh, strain gauge load cell. Um, and uh, obviously, I'll keep the display. That might come in handy. I'll probably save the EPROMs as well. Right, so this is the uh, display board, uh, what we've got on here, uh, we've got a tiny little power, power supply section, another fuse, there's only got plenty of fuses in here. Um, we've got uh, the EPROM, and uh, that is uh, 32K. Um, this is a, um, an Intel uh, microcontroller, it is an N8032AH. There's uh, no built-in memory on that one, um, so it's all running from the uh, the EPROM. Um, we've got a uh, an Intel N825306, which is a serial communications controller, um, and uh, we've got some um, SRAM just here, which is a Hyundai. Um, just up at the top here, we've got a couple of Max um, 232. Um, RS232 drivers, um, we've got a set of four caps for each one for the charge pumping. And that is about it, a few little um, seven series logic stuff on here, nothing on the back. Right, next bit is this, uh, this board here. Right, so this looks like it's uh, some kind of controller board. Um, we have another one of those uh, Intel microcontrollers here and um, another EPROM. This one is a slightly different size. Um, this one is um, only 16K. Uh, we've got a Pizza buzzer. Now under here there's an IC, so I'll pop that off in a second. Um, and we have another Maxim um, Max um, 232, so serial, another serial driver. Uh, we've got a couple of jumper things on here. When when I powered it up, I went through a, a few different uh, scenarios. I pulled the jumpers off and changed them around, see if it make, made any difference, and it didn't. Um, so that should pop off this. Let's see what's under here. Okay, I can't uh, get any information on this part. It, um, it it's. Smacks have been um, a custom ASIC. Um, it's just got uh, a part number on, which doesn't really mean anything. It's not coming up in anything in Google. Um, and uh, interestingly, it does actually say ASIC on it. So that's probably a bit of a giveaway. Um, so that's probably something um, specific. Uh, whether that's the ADC or not, I don't know. It seems to be tied into the EPROM. Right, so this is the board just taken out. Um, I'll just take off the uh, the can here. It does have a shielding on both sides. Okay, this is uh, what is uh, under the shielded can. Um, obviously a load of analog stuff. There's uh, actually some 7.4 seven, um, seven series in there. Um, and an analog multiplexer. There's no ADC here, um, so presumably that was done on that other board. Oh, we've got uh, mains input filter here. 
Okay, here we've got the strain gauge. Um, so this is the um, the mechanism that actually creates the uh, the measurement of, uh, of the weight. Um, it's uh, a series of resistors um, which are attached to this aluminium frame. And uh, as the the weight is applied at the at the top here and pushes downwards, it uh, distorts the aluminium frame and very very slightly changes the resistance of the um, resistors that are placed around uh, and using a Wheatstone bridge uh, you can measure that resistance and uh, then you can get uh, a measurement of weight so as I press down on here you should be able to see it uh, move very slightly so if you want to know more about um, how uh, strain gauges and Wheatstone bridge, bridges work, there will be links to um, the wiki pages uh, for those, uh, those topics in the description. So head there if you want to find out a little bit more about them. Um, one thing that um, is probably worth mentioning, if, um, if you're taking anything apart like this be um, yourself and um, it's got various bits of hardware and stuff in it. It's always handy to save things like these uh, these standoff posts. Um, these can be really, really useful uh, for your own projects. Um, also, if you have uh, various things which are sort of a bit more specialised, like the mounting for for this uh, strain gauge, then it's always worth keeping the uh, the little mounting hardware that they they used in the product, um, it's good to save those with it. Um, it will make your life a whole lot easier if you want to use use that device in the future because you've got already pre-made parts to make it all work. So always worth saving things like that. And we've got some nice clean bits of aluminium ready to go into my recycling pile. Right, so there's my little um, parts haul. I've got uh, the load cell, strain gauge, Got a transformer, might come in useful. Got a nice mains filter, ferrite clip, um, some mounting hardware for the uh, strain gauge, LCD module. That, uh, that might be nice, uh, really big numbers on it, um, and it's really high contrast as well, so that might come in useful. Um, again, as I mentioned before, saving the mounting hardware is always uh, is always handy. You know, I've kept all the little mounting posts, so uh, when I do want to mount it, I don't have to uh, worry too much about how I'm going to make it all fit together. Okay, right. I hope you all enjoyed watching that. Uh, if you did and you're not subscribed, then hit the subscribe button because there's going to be more like this um, and a whole lot of other other stuff as well. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, I will see you on the next video. Catch you later.